Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be working on the 6 4, the 4 door uh, gray one, and we're going to be putting back, putting the motor back together. And we went ahead and took the crank off. And if you want to take a look at here, we're going to just take a quick look at the bearings right here. As you can see, it's getting a little bit wore out right there. Not sure what's happening there, but it's a little wore out right there. And these two are not too bad. This one's starting to get a little bit of wear. And this one a little bit, so, but they're not too bad. Just the front, the front one was a little bit wore out. And check over here, here on the bed plate. This is the other half. They don't look too bad. This one doesn't look too bad. And this one is getting a little bit wore out. Getting a little bit of wear out right here. And then this one, I think the, I think got like a little rock or something that scraped in pretty good right here. Pretty good gouge. This is probably the most wear out one, and this one is not too bad, just a little wear out. So, we're gonna go ahead and switch those out, and then put the crank back in there, and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. We went ahead and changed the, the main bearings out, and we put the bed plate on, and everything, we got it all aligned and torqued. We torqued these down to 170 and three steps. And it looks like it works good. Churns, that's good. It's a good sign. So it's ready for the connecting rods. So we'll go over here and look at the connecting rods that we got. As you can see here, pretty nice. Pretty nice little setup right here. As you can see, this is not the regular style. So what I did is I went, it wasn't in the budget, but I went ahead and had them do the valve release. For this is for if you're getting a bigger camshaft and I was like not in the budget but since I was getting them done already I, I had them do that and then D-lip they usually have a lip right here and these are flat now so it's smooth that is more important is they usually say they, that's what causes them the piston to crack but I don't know it does, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But since this is gonna, I might be turning it up and maybe adding nitrous or something to it. So that's gonna help so it doesn't crack. So this is the piston and then I also got, since I was there, I was doing the pistons, I went and got this, which if you look right here. This is the second ring for the, let me see what it is. I don't know if you can see the part number, but that's the part number right there. And this is the, let me see if I can take one out. Okay, let's see here. If you look, this is the, put that back over here. This is for a gapless ring. So it's two of these, go like that. Let me see, yeah. Something like that. And they make it to where the gap is not there anymore. It goes in a little groove right here. Like that. I can't get it to stay. A little bugger. Well, either way, it goes like that. And then what ends up happening is the little gap it has gets sealed up. So they say that this is good for, so you don't have that much uh, blow by, less blow by. And they say more horsepower, but mainly the main reason I got it is so we don't have as much blow by since the motor's used. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off here, take this ring off and put it somewhere else, the second ring, and then install that one here and then We'll go ahead and change all the all these all the connecting rods on here and we'll slap them back on there and ooh start to slide out and then we'll go ahead and slap them back on, on there and then call it good and then we'll go pick up from there. So here's a little little tidbit. If you're doing the putting the 
this the the gapless ring right here what you do is you go ahead and take off the top ring and then take the second second ring off also which is this one and then you just go ahead and set it aside you're not going to be using that one no more and then what you do is you go ahead and with your pliers here if you look here closely i don't know if you, the camera can pick it up or not but there's a little groove right here so that's going to be facing down and then there's a little dot right here. i don't know if the camera picks it up or not but the little dot that's the facing up so you go ahead and go install this like that go ahead and set it in the second ring right there and then take this ring it's I think it's reversible it looks the same on both sides so I went ahead so the cracks over here I'm gonna go ahead and install it like this go ahead and let it rip and make it go over like that right there and then push the ring out a little bit it's kind of hard okay so you go and it's gonna go under the bottom then you get it closed right there push the ring out a little bit so it could see and then once it goes in there you just go all the way around pressing it all the way so it seats all the way around and then just press it in make sure see right there's not in all the way so Push it, go around, go around, 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 squishing it in, and there you go. There you have it. Now it's all sealed up. So that's your gapless ring right there. So yeah, that's how you install it. And then you put a, go ahead and put this all top ring in there, and then we're good to go. That's just a little tidbit right there. So we'll go ahead and finish it up and keep on going. Another thing we're going to be adding is here is this, uh, what is this? These are the rod bolts, ARP rod bolts. They're, I don't know if this is a part number or what, but they're, uh, it says ARP 250s. And let me see. Yeah, they're ARP 2000. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it says, oh, come on, get in there. Camera's being a little bit on the tight side. But it says ARP 2000 right there. It's the main thing. So we'll just have to take your word for it because that's what it says. So this is the original one and this is the factory one. They're about the same except this one has a little thicker head over here. Which I'm guessing that's for this little collar that's right here. I don't know if you're supposed to put that in or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, toss it. Cause this is what holds the bolt when you take it off so it doesn't fall off the cap. And this one doesn't come with anything. So when you go right here, put it on the cap like that and she flies out. So I'm guessing the, it'll be fine like that with nothing. So yeah, and this these bolts are mainly for yeah, like you, once you're hitting up to like a thousand horsepower, thousand plus horsepower, then when they start stretching, so these are going to be good for, so it doesn't stretch. I haven't gone that high, but I just got to be prepared just in case. That's why I went ahead and got these. So we'll go ahead and uh, change them all out and put these, this hardware in there and then set them inside and then try it out and see how it goes. We got all the pistons set in here. As you can see right here, it says cam, with like a C right there. So that side goes toward the center of the engine. And if you check, they're all, they all got the C. And on this side, except this one right here, it has a C on the opposite side. 
I think I'm not sure what happened there. Um, uh, yeah, I think it got they put it on the wrong side, and then here we're missing one. But I think this one they had it backwards because the the best way to check is right here. If we look right here, this there's a little hole right here. The little like a little indentation. That's where the oil squirter goes. So that's always facing towards the center of the engine. So then on that one it was opposite so we couldn't do that because not if you don't put it like that with that with this piece right here facing towards the engine you're gonna chop the oil squirter off. So yeah just if you if you're not sure check this when you're putting in putting in the piston that this goes where the little J jet goes for the oil and then the reason why we're missing here this one right here is because I broke the when I was installing it I was using this valve spring compressor and it doesn't work very good so it doesn't compress very good and you get a better one but I was doing it and it it didn't compress it enough so it ended up you see here it smashed the it didn't compress it enough, so I smashed it when I was putting it in, and it broke the oil ring. So now, I'm going to go ahead and get order another one, another another ring, so we can go ahead and install it. But for now, and then we'll just go ahead and install this head, and get it ready. And then, once the other ring comes in, we'll go ahead and install the, the other piston and the, the head on the other side. So... Yep, looks like we're getting there, so we'll keep on doing some more and then show you a little little bit as we go. So the next thing we're going to start working on is the lifters. Here we have a uh, mellings. These are melling brands right here. If you look at it, right here is right here. I don't know if you can see the part number, but that's the part number right there. And then these, I bought these, but I think they're not that good. Because I was checking the spring tension on it. If you look right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can kind of see that the spring is really soft. And then you get one of these, the factory ones. This one's a factory one. And the spring does not move, it's super hard. So I'm guessing these are not that good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, for experimenting purposes, we're going to set these on this side, the mailings. And since we, we don't have any other ones, and we're going to experiment, we're going to leave these on this side. We're going to leave the old ones, which are, which are around 100 and 250 on this side and see, see what happens there. So. It's going to be an interesting situation, you know. Since this is not professionally done, this is more so you could live on the edge and, and have fun and see what's going to break. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then on this side, we won't be able to finish here because I, what I was looking at is this piston that I showed you guys that has the C in the wrong spot. I think I'm going to have to send back because if you look at the valves right here, it doesn't, it's like more that way. The reliefs, it's a little more that way. And this one's more like that way. So I don't think the, since the C's down here, the way the valves are cut is not, they're not gonna align with the valves on the head. All the, all the rest are pretty good. They're all facing the same way. Except this one that has the seat down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have to take it out. And maybe send it back and have them check it out. Maybe. I think they might have to get a different one. I might have to get a new one that's done right. So this side we won't be able to do anything on it. We'll have to figure that situation out and then go from there. So yep, let's go ahead and uh, we'll put the lifters and then maybe put the lifters and put that head over there. Because that side's good. And then maybe the front cover. And then once we get our other ring that we're missing right here, 
the one that I broke, we'll be able to install this and then and I get the right piston with the valves relief cut in the right spot, then I'll put that one into. So this side is going to be left open for now. We'll finish that up once we get the supplies back here. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, we went ahead and got the whole head on and everything ready and this side is good to go. We, put, we went ahead and put the rocker arms, the bridges, and torque the bridges down to 45 volt pounds. We got the injectors in, torque them down to around 30 pounds, give or take. And the injector lines and the log got all connected, all the injectors running good. We replaced the glow plugs with brand new ones, motor crap ones. It's probably a good idea when you're in here to change them out and get new ones. Since we're up north, we, we need them pretty good. If you're down south where it's hot, it's not that important. Too much, so. If you can't afford them, be enough for later. And looks like we're doing good, we're getting a little bit done, a little progress here. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and throw the cover on here, and this side will be all done and ready to go. On to the next thing. We went ahead and got the front cover all set up here. The only thing that I'm probably going to change is the water pump. Since I'm already here, usually they end up going out. So right now, before I put it in, I'm going to go get another pump and change it out. But we got all the front cover, the low pressure oil pump, all set up. We're good there. And back here, we got the... I had another spare new fuel pump that I was supposed to put on the other truck. On this, on the white truck, this one. I never put it on. So we just go going ahead and put it on here. Start off with the new one. And the only thing you have to change is this gear right here. You got to take that bolt off. So it has a, like a little hole right there where you can hold the gear and take it off. The only thing is the nut or the head, the bolt that holds the gear is backwards. So it's counter. To take it off, you got to go backwards. So you got to go, instead of regular tiny, you got to go counterclockwise to take the bolt off. And, and then to, to put it back on, you just put it on and then torque it to 45 foot pounds. And then you're good to go. So I think we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and leave it off right here and just cover this and then we're gonna wait for the oil cooler. We, we're not gonna go ahead and put it because the pedestal is in the way. So in order to put it on, we'd have to take the pedestal off, which I don't wanna put it on right now. So we'll just put okay, get that on the next round. We'll just leave it for now. So I think well, that'll do it for now and then We'll have to wait maybe a week and a half, two weeks before we can hopefully get everything figured out. And then that way we can button everything back up and put it in the in the truck. So for now, we'll just leave off of here. And then once we get all the parts, we'll jump back on this and finish it up. And then for now, we'll just probably jump on something else and do work on another truck. So that should be good for today. And uh, see you guys in the next one.